Hello and welcome. My name is Vitotas from Cendita. We still see some people joining. Let's let's wait for a couple of minutes and then we'll start. Hello and welcome once again. My name is Vito Tascherniauskas from Civita. It's nice to see all of you, so many joining this webinar. I will have some housekeeping notes in the beginning and then I go through the agenda for today. Uh, first, if you will have some questions, uh, please use the chat function. Uh, we will have uh, sometime at the end to answer uh, the questions that you might have after the presentation but if something is unclear or or you have you have some suggestion or a comment uh, uh, earlier in uh, in the presentation uh, please feel free to ask we will try to accommodate for that uh, we will also launch some uh, polls in the beginning uh, so please, please participate as well. And one uh, ask from our side is please uh, change your names, rename yourself in the, in the, in the Zoom by pressing the three three dots to your name uh, to include your organization. We want to know where, which organization you're coming from, just uh, the name of your organization. Please, uh, please do that so that uh, we will know. Uh, what organization you represent. So just your uh, first name, last name, and organization. I already see some, some of you uh, doing that. We are also recording this webinar. So if you will have some interested, uh, interested people in your network or colleagues that uh, have missed this uh, fantastic opportunity, uh, they will be able to see the recording of this uh, of this presentation of this webinar, as well as the recording of the Facebook Live that we're running simultaneously. 
So once again, please change your names in the Zoom to include the name of your organization in, uh, in the description of, uh, of you. And uh, having said that, I think uh, I'll tell a bit uh, about myself in the next slide and, and our agenda for today. After that will be, uh, we will present the project, uh, what we're doing here. I will pre present myself and Savita very briefly. Uh, we will talk about blockchain. What is blockchain? What are the main principles? How it works? Uh, what does it mean? It's quite complicated to, to describe this uh, difficult concept in, in simple terms, but nevertheless, I will try to do that. Then we will talk about application, uh, different areas and examples of uh, how blockchain is applied or can be applied in, in practical real life. Then we will talk about the sectors and, and, the, and the research that we have done about particular sectors where blockchain has the, the highest potential of application. Uh, and we will delve into three of those uh, most probable sectors uh, for blockchain. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit as well. And then and last but not least, we will talk about the tool which could help you and your partners identify uh, if um, if you should use blockchain in uh, in your uh, uh, in your business or in your organization uh, in your company and so on. So briefly about the Blockstar project. Uh, it is an uh, European uh, Euro European partnership program uh, financed by by European Commission. Uh, for the Horizon 2020 program, uh, where uh, the program is aiming to, to, to facilitate uh, partnership, partnerships between blockchain, uh, uh, digital ledger technology, distributed ledger technology uh, providers, and, and, and match them with the users of, uh, of solutions that those providers are developing. Uh, so matching blockchain in simple terms, match, matching blockchain uh, providers with blockchain users, companies, small, small and medium enterprises, which could benefit from, uh, from those solutions. And, and briefly about myself, you, you can see uh, my, uh, my short bio. Uh, I worked for, at Uber uh, for some time, and, and right now I'm a startup advisor and mentor, including uh, Blockstart uh, programs. So I know uh, quite a few um, developers and some SMEs that are involved in the, in the Blockstar program and how they are implementing blockchain solutions in, in real life. And, and Civita is, uh, is a leading in, uh, management consultancy in, in um, emerging Europe, Central, Eastern, Nordic Europe. And, and we are particularly interested in the innovation field uh, and we're running, actually participating in, in three block, uh, blockchain uh, based programs uh, at the moment. Um, okay, before we jump into the next uh, next um, part of the webinar, uh, what I would like to ask my dear colleagues is to launch um, a, a poll, a poll that uh, we will ask you to very, very quickly answer. Uh, first, the, the first question is, uh, what type of the organization you represent? We want to know uh, more about, uh, about you about your organization. So that's one of the reasons why I asked to, to, to change your name to, to the name, uh, your personal name and the name of the organization so that we, for research purposes, um, um, we could know you better. Uh, and then there will be the second question after the 30 seconds that we have left. So please uh, answer first question. Okay, we still have more than 10 people who have not answered this question, so I urge you to use the rest of the time to pick one of the answers.
Okay, thank you for your answers. We have uh, clearly the majority is startups and SMEs. I'm glad to see so many of you here. Now, the second question is, uh, with how many startups or SMEs uh, do you work with? So how many partners or, or clients uh, or part of any association type of association that you might have? Um, how many approximately or on average do uh, your organization um, engages with in different capacities? Okay, uh, maybe 10 more seconds, just uh, for roughly 10 of the people that have not answered yes, please pick one of the one of the answers. It's nice. Uh, I see some people commenting in the chat, uh, what kind of representation you present and uh, what you do in, the, in one sentence. That's also very appreciated. Thanks a lot for those doing that very helpful. Okay, thank you very much for the answers. These are the answers. Uh, I see quite a nice representation. Thanks a lot for your answers. Now we can go on and uh, start to uh, move to the to the part where I will try to I will do my best to to explain what uh, blockchain is and how it uh, works. Mm. The advantages of the technology of blockchain they actually stem from from its unique features uh, and, and uh, by describing those features, by describing uh, what, uh, what, what is unique about blockchain, uh, it's one of the approaches to explain uh, how it actually works and, and what, uh, what benefits it can bring to, uh, to our world. Um, the first one is, uh, the first feature of blockchain is that it is immutable. So um, it is a, Blockchain, as, as the name suggests, it's, it's a chain of blocks, uh, or in other words, it's a list. It's a list of blocks. It's a list of, of, of records, uh, a list um, that cannot be changed. So that's why it, it's, uh, it's immutable. Uh, if, if, if we could imagine, let's say, a very simple situation, uh, there are two friends. One is, is, is borrowing money from, from another friend, and the first one uh, who's lending the money, he writes down the uh, the, the amounts of the um, of the money that uh, that he lent uh, to his friend, um, and let's imagine a situation. Well, there are several uh, of those records, uh, and and that uh, let's well uh, f uh, first uh, she borrows let's say hundred euros. The second time she borrows fifty euros. Maybe she gives back hundred euros at some point. Then she borrows two hundred euros, and so on and so forth. And then one day, um, she comes into into this friend's house, and and they're having fun time. And then she sees all those records, and then she decides to delete uh, delete uh, one of the records that she has borrowed two hundred euros. So the list has been changed. It's not immutable, uh, and in this way. Uh, this record uh, has been uh, has been compromised. So blockchain is um, actually uh, the, the nature the, it's itself, the nature of the uh, blockchain ledgers, uh, immu immutable in nature ensures that this, there's a robust uh, robust uh, workflow in cases where uh, the participants, the users, need uh, this data security. The, the, 
be 100% sure that nobody can come and change that, uh, those records. Uh, second very important feature is, is that blockchain is decentralized, meaning that usually in networks or other situations where we have a lot of participants, uh, we, need, we need some central authority, some independent uh, party or third party to do those, that record keeping or bookkeeping or be that clearing house or depository of information or, or record keeping um, and, and be responsible for that. And the more parties that are there, the, 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 the higher the stakes, uh, the higher the risk that somebody would come and, and uh, um, well, um, maybe change that uh, those records or or do some, do something else with it uh, with them. In the decentralized world or decentralized uh, blockchain-based network, um, again, I will simpl simplify uh, simplify it, but basically. Uh, on every computer of every instance, um, every participants of that network keeps the copy of the whole list. So it's next to impossible to change a decentralized system because uh, if you change in one part, uh, in, in one or two or three percent of the of the participants, the majority will still have this true, true information and true source uh, of, of those records. So decentralization, decentralization allows the participants to verify and audit those transactions and those records independently and, and relatively inexpensively. And in, in, uh, in this manner, remove the central authority or, or central uh, party uh, who, who usually takes part, takes care of, of, this, uh, um, of this verification and, uh, and audit and uh, being the source of truth. Um, then another feature is that blockchain is a transaction ledger. Uh, transaction ledger means that um, it consists the history of all transactions. So you can trace back, uh, trace back the previous transactions. Uh, it's not only verification of the current current transactions, but also uh, the whole uh, history. We can reproduce and we can confirm that. Uh, let's say we have different transactions and that the transaction has been or some value has been transferred only once and, and, and not several, uh, several times. Um, so in this, because of this historical nature um, and this history keeping, uh, blockchain is suitable for applications when it is necessary to keep the, tra the history of transactions. So we will see in some of the cases that we will, the examples that we'll see in the future. Uh, but that's another important, important feature. And um, well, this transaction history is of course digital. Uh, in, in, uh, but digital uh, means that we can work with digital assets and a lot of blockchain applications uh, work with uh, uh, with with it, but we digitalization means that we can actually work with physical, real life assets and digitalize records on those assets. And we will again see those uh, examples. Well, if we're talking about uh, some transactions or supply chain, etc., it is possible to track. Or or uh, RFID. Uh, or other uh, other means to uh, those physical real life uh, goods and have a digital record on blockchain where we can actually um, again have it immutable decentralized uh, with transaction history and also transparent because nobody can hide the history of transactions all parties uh, every node in the network they can check, verify, audit, as I said. And, uh, and in this case, uh, blockchain-based platforms uh, are good, uh, good to have a good use case for uh, goods provenance tracking and well, customers can uh, ch check the origin of goods. And for example, for charities, it could also be a good application. And we have seen startups uh, uh, exploring similar solutions where we could see the history of spendings, let's say, of all donations that have been given to charity 
on um, on uh, blockchain. This is quite a complicated uh, slide, so I will try to to help you digest it. Um, and and uh, this is an example of a supply chain from a supplier to the end uh, end consumer. Uh, and and what kind of uh, uh, information and, and data is being transferred and used and recorded uh, on blockchain. So top down. <coughs> Sorry. So in the supply chain management uh, blockchain uh, could act as a ledger for all the transactions and actions. It could cover all the stages of the, the supply chain uh, or just part of uh, the supply chain. Maybe there's no need to cover the whole, uh, the whole chain from suppliers to, to, to the end uh, consumer. Maybe we, can, uh, we want to capture only part of it. Uh, but in general, uh, all the parties, since uh, all the data uh, is stored on blockchain, it's immutable, it's transparent, it's audit auditable, um, all parties can be confident that the, the, the origin of the goods, uh, the provenance, the movement, uh, any stage that we need to ver verify, either where the, the, the let's say, uh, the raw materials come from, uh, or uh, how, how and where and when it has been shipped, or, or in what conditions it has been stored, uh, and so on. All this can be verified by, by uh, accessing the um, uh, blockchain records, and as well as, as uh, uh, there are additional, uh, additional uh, benefits in, uh, in terms of uh, uh, provenance and uh, smart contracts and so on. Um, just quickly answering the question from Joao, yes, the presentation is being recorded uh, and, and uh, th there's a Facebook Live that, uh, that, um, that you can refer to afterwards as well. Uh, so coming back to the, uh, to the supply chain, uh, for example, uh, some manufacturers, for example, they can use the uh, the data stored on blockchain to check the origin of, of the supplies, check the quality if, if it's, if it's uh, according to the specification, um, and, and pretty much everyone can check the origin of the goods and history of, of moving. Um, it could be some sensors, it could be uh, barcodes or FID or other uh, ways to capture and that movement uh, throughout the, the, the chain. And with the use of smart contracts, we will not get uh, very deep into it, but uh, I, will, I will talk a bit, uh, a bit more about it, this, this and that logic a bit later. Uh, we could, again, um, check the, uh, the conditions and also um, provide automatic actions. And another uh, the two real world examples of, uh, of how uh, this origin can be, can be traced. So one is called wine blockchain. Um, I will not go very deep into that. It's been developed by EZ Lab and it basically uses blockchain uh, to, to track the provenance and to make sure that, uh, that the wineries uh, well, from from the from grapes to, to the end uh, bottle, they uh, they track the, the origin of the wine, uh, and this these uh, the second uh, use case is the, the oranges. I believe it's it's red oranges, uh, if if I remember correctly, in the blood oranges. Sorry, um, uh, it, it's a wine oranges as well as a lot of other goods. Uh, they suffer a con uh, counterfe uh, counterfeiting. Uh, and uh, blockchain uh, technology helps ensure that the, 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 those oranges are real. They're not fake. They come from, from the actual uh, growth places uh, where they claim. And you can be sure that if you pay a lot of money, you get uh, 
the right goods for uh, for the end consumers. Another uh, another use case is in healthcare. So electronic uh, health rec records storage is is pretty easy to understand uh, and. Uh, um, well, health provider, health services providers, hospital clinics, they create those records, uh, but it's very important to, since it, it contains a lot of uh, private information to keep them safe, uh, but at the same time to be able to share it with the right doctors, uh, with the right uh, pharmacists, uh, and so on. Uh, so the information is, well, the electronic healthcare health records uh, creators, uh, hospitals or, or doctors, uh, they can record those records on blockchain uh, so that it's encrypted uh, and only uh, certain information, certain people can access with, uh, with permissions. Uh, so patients can have access to their personal records. Uh, they can share it with, the, with other parties. Um, and, and blockchain can also, uh, well, not only ensure that the data is safe, but also uh, have a layer of uh, anonymity and anonymization. Um, uh, so some part of the, let's say, uh, anonymized data might be a, 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 might be um, accessible for for research purposes for uh, to um, uh, researchers, uh, data analysis um, scientists, and so on. But otherwise, it, it uh, would be confidential. Um, and but the data at the same time. Um, would be safe uh, and integral. And a couple of real world examples. Uh, the first one is Oncochain. Uh, it, it's um, again uh, blockchain based uh, um, also a solution where, uh, where the electronic health records uh, will be personalized, but also include some recommendations for oncological care. Uh, and, and also there's some research component um, and blockchain acts as a, as a safe ledger uh, for, the, for the sharing of that information uh, when needed. Uh, another uh, example is Estonian public uh, services system uh, where blockchain, uh, where um, let's say uh, e-prescriptions and, and other um, other public services uh, are, are uh, not only online but also um, with the help of blockchain the technology uh, they which ensures uh, ensures um, data integrity uh, we can check the origin of the medical prescription that is actually real um, pharmacists can check or some other uh, other uh, interested parties um, and we can make sure that it's not it's not forged it's not counterfeited uh, another area as an example uh, is uh, KYC the know your customer process uh, banks and other financial institutions they spend uh, enormous amounts of money millions and tens and hundreds of millions uh, of, of euros uh, to ensure compliance to ensure anti-money laundering to 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 make sure that the customers who claim who they are they actually are uh, um, and and so on and uh, uh, with blockchain that the 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 customers would uh, only need to upload their documents once. Uh, not every time they are, they're asked for proof of ID. Um, and then after that, uh, only doing that only once, all the interested parties that need to make sure that this customer is who they claim to be, uh, they are who they are, and that every uh, party in that network uh, can be confident in that data and, and, and uh, be sure that uh, uh, that that uh, this ID uh, has been verified. A couple of uh, examples in the real world. Uh, one is is called Clippers. It's a password management system uh, again for, for for any device, including smartphones, uh, based on uh, based on blockchain. There are several of those solutions in uh, in real life. 
um, quite uh, quite successful and, and growing. Um, and the use of blockchain um, makes sure that the, the passwords are, are stored uh, safely. AVYC chain uh, is a compliance dashboard. It's a sort of white label solution uh, for, for, for customers uh, to, to for banks and other financial institutions where they need to onboard uh, clients and, and perform anti-money laundering and, uh, and lawyer customer procedures, identify and, and, and then ask for And now we are moving to uh, another uh, another part of uh, of the webinar uh, when we're speaking about the particular particular uh, use cases for blockchain. This is uh, sort of a wrapping up slide. Uh, and uh, uh, I touched upon this uh, before when I talked about how blockchain works. And because of, of uh, transparency, immutability, decentralization, uh, transaction history, and, and, and other features that uh, I, uh, I talked about, uh, were does the blockchain technology, where does it have the, the, the highest potential to create the most value? And because of the inherent features of blockchain, uh, blockchain could bring, bring the most value where uh, there is common interest of different parties, um, where, where uh, there's a lot of information, but no centralized, no one owner, no, no one gatekeeper. Uh, Maybe a need of, of getting rid of, of some intermediaries that uh, that slow the process down, or it's inefficient uh, and, and not very uh, quick, and maybe costly. Uh, there are some contractual relationships. There's an if this if this then that logic, uh, which means that uh, um, we can either say that this job has been done in, with these parameters, or it has not been done. Has been done, but not with these parameters. It's very clear, and, and the system uh, should be able to identify is it true, false, and 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 no in between in between cases. Where we have digital assets, it's much easier, even though there, as I said, there we can talk about the digitalization of the physical world, uh, and where there is a need for immutable, secure, transparent uh, history of, of uh, transactions. Um, one thing before going to the next slide, one thing that I would, I would like to, you to share in the chat uh, is if you could mention some of the known use cases from your countries that you know of, some specific examples in one sentence, maybe just the name or maybe explaining uh, where you have seen or heard uh, blockchain used in real life. Uh, it could be some of the areas that I already or have already talked about. Uh, maybe it's supply chain. Maybe it's uh, um, well, let's say um, depository of securities, or a factoring uh, company, or some uh, maybe notary public has been transferred uh, onto onto blockchain and decentralized, or maybe some other um, cases of application. Uh, please share in the chat. Uh, we will gladly listen to uh, to the cases that you have uh, in your countries. Uh, that would be very useful. Okay, we're running. Uh, we still have a lot of ground to cover. Uh, let's go to uh, the research part uh, and the areas where we have identified sectors which have the highest potential for blockchain use. So we have done uh, research, we have done expert interviews with uh, tens of experts from uh, all around the world. Uh, we have verified the research with, uh, with the SMEs. Um, I will 
to save some time, I will not go very deeply into the methodology. Um, these are the sectors that we have uh, identified, uh, which have um, uh, which have potential, uh, or which are quite wide uh, and and growing and um, and important for the economy. Then we used seven criteria, two quantitative criteria, uh, share value, share va share of value by added by SMEs, number of SMEs, and also qualitative criteria such as maturity level, um, level of blockchain already in implemented, or, or is feasibility of blockchain solutions, um, some barriers that might arise, and so on. And by by calculating those uh, those criteria, we have identified uh, three top sectors that have uh, have ranked the highest in the, in this uh, in this work. Uh, by by different criteria, as I already mentioned, the feasibility and and and, and the number and maturity and so on, and. Um, Wholesale, uh, wholesale and retail has been identified as number one, fintech as number two, and information and communication technology as number three. And all of those three have actually three different reasons why they are uh, popular, that they have the highest potential. So we will go now through all the three sectors uh, one by one uh, and talk about uh, both about why they have. Um, they have been identified uh, as, as, as uh, having the highest potential uh, and also talk about some, uh, some uh, what experts have said about those, uh, those areas and maybe talk about some examples. Wholesale, wholesale and retail. Um, was one of the reasons uh, why blockchain is so promising uh, in, in this sector is uh, the high level of feasibility and also maturity of, uh, of technology. So in, in other words, we could say that there is a very high need uh, of uh, modern solutions and novel solutions uh, to disrupt or improve this, uh, this sector. So you see some numbers. Uh, uh, this uh, wholesale and retail sector has, has ranked high on, on, on all, almost all of the, uh, of the criteria, um, such as legislative uh, regulatory independence. Uh, we have seen some sectors which have very high potential, but uh, there are a lot of barriers in terms of that there, there's a need of, uh, or there's a lot of regulation that uh, laws regulating uh, those sectors. And well, uh, another very, very important factor is, of course, that there are a lot of SMEs in, in, uh, in this sector uh, that can provide value added um, here. So, um, as I already mentioned, um, there is a huge need for increased efficiency and speed. Uh, it's very competitive, very growing market. Uh, there is a need for novel uh, innovations. Uh, and there's also uh, there's some legislation in in uh, uh, on a, in the in the works, uh, and also there are, there has been some innovation. There has been some uh, disruption in in the supply chain. So it's uh, uh, in in this from this perspective, this sector has a lot of potential for for blockchain based uh, based solutions, uh, and it, it can be uh, addressed from different angles. Uh, we will see that in the next slide. Uh, there are a couple of barriers uh, in uh, in uh, in this area. Uh, well, there's a there's since we're talking mostly about uh, moving physical goods, uh, there's a need for for sensors or other identification um, methods to to track the supply chain, uh, and also uh, since we're talking about supply chain. Uh, there's a need to onboard suppliers and all the participants in the chain and convince them of the benefits of, of, of uh, transparent operations. Uh, and, and it only works when the majority of all or all the participants are, are there. 
uh, once they're there, it works like magic, but they're there. Uh, there will be some, there are some challenges to onboard everyone uh, and some costs involved as well. Um, <clears throat> you see uh, the opinion of uh, one of the experts why this particular sector is, is, is uh, has potential for blockchain based solutions. Um, other experts also mentioned transparency and, and, and uh, the need for goods verification. Um, and as particular examples, I already talked about supply chain, supply chain management. We can also talk about the behavior of consumers on, on, on certain platforms such as trading to know their preferences or uh, automatic settlements with, with companies and merchandising. Uh, providing confidence in the storage of information about uh, well, how the goods are moving and and uh, and, and also display of uh, let's say advertising at a, at a certain time uh, proof of good goods provenance uh, we already talked about the, that with the example of say, oranges of wine uh, there's a need an increasing need of transparency and ensuring of uh, the quality and also um, uh, the, the origin of, uh, of, the, uh, of the goods, uh, loyalty programs uh, made to simplify uh, and so on and so forth. So these are some of the solutions, but of course there can be more um, and a lot of actors can, can, uh, can use those. Another sector, uh, which was ranked number two, uh, finance and insurance sector. Um, it's smaller, obviously, compared to wholesale and retail. Uh, again, it, it ranks high on, on um, many uh, of, the, of the criteria, except for regulatory independence. Of course, finance, insurance, and other fintech uh, areas, they're usually quite relatively heavily regulated. So this is certainly one of the barriers uh, as, as we will see uh, in this slide. Uh, and, and another barrier is uh, inertia. It's a conservative sector. Uh, we need to engage a lot of actors in uh, on the market uh, and that requires standards. Uh, or some agreements for, for data storage, processing, protection, uh, and so on. <clears throat> At the same time, um, FinTech is, is uh, probably the most popular sector right now uh, for black blockchain implementation. There are a lot of uh, different uh, startups and, and in even corporations, large corporations, established corporations using blockchain uh, already today, uh, investigating those solutions. Uh, and a lot of uh, has already been done, uh, particularly in the, in the areas of, of uh, digital currencies, but, uh, but not only. Uh, technology is, is, is quite advanced um, well, compared to, to other areas. Um, uh, blockchain has a lot of potential in terms of accelerating uh, um, uh, transactions and also making it cheaper than cheaper uh, since it eliminates intermedi intermediaries, um, which is very important. The less intermediaries, the, the cheaper uh, the operations and also the high, uh, higher trust, less errors uh, and so on. And then the recent recent development in terms of GDPR, uh, need for security, uh, higher focus on anti-money laundering, uh, knowing your customer and other requirements, uh, increases the need for solutions uh, that ensure, uh, ensure transparency, ensure safety, security, uh, and, and other features. So, uh, from from this perspective, fintech is 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 uh, really ripe and ready, uh, and uh, we have actually seen uh, quite a few areas um, uh, from, uh, as I mentioned, uh, identity management, uh, know your customer, 
uh, user identification, uh, to, to store uh, how to store personal data of, of customers and also the actions and logs of actions that they, what they have done in the system and make sure that all the records are mutable, uh, secure, uh, and so on. Mm, uh, and and uh, that those databases of records, they're, they're uh, not accessible for fraudsters uh, and, and, um, and that they're kept safely. Um, uh, other uh, examples could be peer-to-peer -peer insurance platforms to, to use smart contracts for um, execution of, of uh, insurance payments. It could be factoring solutions that are uh, being developed, it could be securities depository, um, and so on and so forth. Um, as, as you see, the, the, ex, the expert quote and other experts, they have also mentioned transparency, the, the, the possibility to remove intermediaries, uh, immutability, cheaper auditing, um, and, and uh, there has been a lot of investments already, and, and uh, this sector already has a wide range of already established and operating companies, as, as I have mentioned. Uh, not only startups, but uh, large international companies uh, which are investing heavily into blockchain-based uh, solutions uh, already today uh, in the financial insurance area. And the third sector uh, is information and communications technology. Uh, it is for the Blockchain adoption is, is uh, growing there as well. Uh, again, you can see high, uh, high scores on pretty much uh, all along all the criteria. <clears throat> uh, and the main, the main drivers uh, are, and the, the, the reason why this sector makes a lot of sense is that it is already very tech savvy. Uh, it, it, it adapts new technologies, including blockchain, very fast. It's, it's, uh, it's ex exploring innovation, uh, tries, tries a lot of things. Uh, there is a need to, to reduce the costs, including data storage. Um, and there has been, have been innovation. Instead of a server, now we can rent the space in the cloud. Uh, and as in the fintech sector that I mentioned, there's an increasing need for security and privacy of the data and, and blockchain can, uh, can help ensure that. <clears throat> um, there are certain uh, challenges, of course, um, not, not in all, not all the cases, uh, blockchain is the ideal solution uh, because of its inherent features. Um, for different reasons, but nevertheless, it has uh, a lot of potential, uh, as, as our experts uh, mentioned. Uh, again, um, data storage, uh, the tech savviness of, uh, of, of companies, uh, clear, this sector has usually clear workflows, clear logic of, of, of uh, different stages and workflows and, and, and so on. Uh, and it's relatively easy to, um, uh, to implement blockchain solutions. And some of the solutions that, uh, that have been implemented or are in the works or some, some specific examples um, or success cases, um, distributed cloud storage, where we could, uh, it's well, similar to cloud storage, but it's more secure and it access, uh, it allows access to data only if, uh, if you have a special key uh, as a user. Uh, documents encryption systems, um, they allow encrypt documents with the ability to transfer permissions to specific parties uh, only to, to those who, who should have had access, voice communication and, and with, the, with the need of, of new methods of, of authentication without the need of, uh, uh, of, a, cert, of a carrier or a certain authorization party. Um, 
And since voice over IP technology can use stronger data security, uh, blockchain could uh, could be helpful in the, in the telecom uh, of, uh, authentication. Uh, unified communication is another uh, case where we could we could uh, uh, share some specific pieces of information without breaking down silos or exposing data to, to the misuse. <clears throat> and now the last part of, uh, of this webinar, I will briefly go through, through the tool that we, uh, we are advertising to you. And I have the pleasure of uh, presenting it to you. It, the tool is called, Do You Need Blockchain? Those who have not uh, seen this tool or heard about it, uh, well, we will share it afterwards, but you can go to blockstar.eu slash DLT uh, and, and um, fill in this, uh, what's in the form of a survey. Uh, and uh, the, this survey, it, it consists of three blocks of questions. Uh, the first block is about, well, it's more formal questions about your uh, your company. If it's an SME, uh, what sector is it? Uh, is it active in uh, the sector? The second uh, part of the questions uh, is uh, about the uh, level of innovation within within the company within the organization. Uh, and the third part, the third block of questions, is um, uh, to determine. Um, features of your company and also the compliance of, of the with the features um, for different areas of blockchain use. So basically, trying to uh, uh, understand uh, if if uh, if how you how you run your organization, how you run your company, uh, what. Uh, level of your innovation is in the company and would the uh, would, uh, blockchain uh, technology or distributed ledger technology um, uh, how much value could it potentially create uh, <clears throat> so to to illustrate it how, how the tool helps you decide if uh, if you need blockchain uh, it, it, it identifies uh, certain areas or certain key uh, features based on, on, on the blockchain features that I have uh, described in the beginning. Uh, uh, and, and maybe it could help you if, if it would help you to, if you have say, contractual obligations, uh, if, if you have business processes or a lot of repetitive tasks, if you're working with digital assets, that's a clear sign that maybe you, you could use um, blockchain. Um, maybe you have a need of tokenizing or digitalizing assets. Um, you maybe work with data storage protection and transfer, and, and there's a need to optimize and, and automate it. Uh, supply chain, there's a, an opportunity to optimize it and, um, or getting rid of intermediaries improve transaction efficiency if you work with transactions uh, or business trans uh, transparency. Of course, there's nothing wrong if, uh, if your SME or your organization does not have a need for blockchain. Mm, not, not everyone does have it. Uh, that is perfectly fine. Uh, but what we would encourage you and also your partners, uh, your we, well, when, when we asked in the beginning how many SMEs um, you are working with, uh, one of the reasons why we, we asked that question is to try to understand um, that maybe you could help dis dis disseminate the, um, this tool uh, and, uh, and help others uh, evaluate their potential of uh, blockchain implementation in the um, in their organizations, so that uh, that would probably be uh, our ask from uh, from our side uh, to share this tool 
and it's quite interactive, quite fun uh, to, to fill it in. Uh, and it actually uh, could help any, anyone filling in that questionnaire the, with the help of that tool, identify the need. Um, and if, if there is a need, uh, we can discuss and help you uh, identify the next steps for, for blockchain implementation. <clears throat> I guess uh, this is mostly it from from my side. Uh, if you have any questions about the use cases of blockchain, uh, if you still have some use cases, please share them in the chat. If you have some other information, questions about either about the tool, uh, the tool, do you need blockchain, uh, or sectors that we have talked about. Or blockchain itself. Uh, now you have an opportunity to ask those questions. Please, please write in the chat or or uh, other format. This is the time for for questions. I interpret the silence as uh, as a signal that I have done a perfect job. Uh, everybody knows what blockchain is, what are the potential application areas, what are the sectors and also examples of uh, blockchain implementation or in real world. Um, nevertheless, if you have uh, still questions uh, or uh, or uh, any other comments, I'm uh, ready to listen. Uh, agriculture use cases. Okay, <laughs> thank you for the compliments. Uh, agriculture, yes. Uh, actually, I have been mentoring some, uh, some, um, mm, some startups in, in the agriculture uh, area. Uh, what I have seen in terms of blockchain, it usually um, targets um, uh, targets provenance uh, and the certification. So uh, those startups are working with uh, coffee, wine, uh, and in this case, uh, blood oranges. Uh, and and uh, other goods uh, and the, the 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 problem that they're they're trying to solve is is uh, the tracking of the supply chain and also provenance and certification of that uh, well it be it either cheese or or wine or other uh, other goods uh, and products which um, uh, which um, have a need of uh, of proof certification and this certification well in some cases uh, it goes all the way to the consumer it can be a qr code on a, on a can or bottle or, or package or whatnot where the the user can scan and go to the website uh, and see all the information where how when uh, it has been produced stored and so on so and so forth so let's say it comes from a small village in in greece or or italy whatever that be um, and it has been produced uh, there, and, and, and you can track all the all the way up to uh, up to the table, or it can be used, let's say, by uh, distributors, by imports, uh, have a need to make sure that what they are importing uh, actually comes from where it says, and it has not been counterfeited or or faked. Uh, so these uh, these are usually the uh, the areas uh, where blockchain is. Uh, used or 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 actually solutions are being developed as we speak uh, right now. If there are other use cases, I will be gladly uh, interested to to hearing them uh, about it. Mm -hmm. Yes, I agree. I agree with that uh, about the agricultural practices. So here, uh, it it stems not only to agriculture. It it can be to it can uh, it, we can extend it to 
uh, mining, uh, to uh, blood diamonds, not only to blood oranges, but to blood diamonds, to illegal uh, foresting, for example, uh, and, and other areas where uh, there is a need uh, of, uh, of uh, certification. And, and Jose is making a real good, Jose Rafael, a very good point. Um, <clears throat> so that's uh, let's say manufacturers need to make sure that uh, raw materials that that reach their their facility uh, actually come from from sustainable uh, sustainable uh, practice areas uh, and uh, and the end consumer uh, who and the consumers who also care about um, uh, about sustainability and about uh, fair fair treatment of nature and people uh, they could also uh, make sure that they're consuming the, the, um, the, uh, the goods that, uh, that leave uh, the least of the footmark, uh, so to say. <clears throat> uh, in terms of uh, recommendation, recommended solutions for, for supply chain management, this is a very broad question, um, I think. Uh, I think this is this is one for for discussion um, with with our team and uh, uh, and uh, we could uh, if you uh, if you would write us an email that uh, our colleague uh, our colleagues can share I think we can discuss it or maybe we can uh, we can lead you some ways um, in, in uh, uh, with some additional information. Uh, and the question about uh, getting started with blockchain in terms of effort and costs. Again, this is a very, very broad question. It depends on the, on the practical, uh, practical um, problems they are trying to solve. Uh, there, there are some out of the off the shelf solutions uh, that are available uh, that can be adapted. Uh, there, there could be some development costs in, in the particular case and so on. So. I'm afraid I cannot answer very uh, specifically to, to this uh, quite a broad question. Um, and again, if you have some interesting use cases, please, uh, please um, feel free to share. Any other questions? Okay, thank you. If no more questions, uh, then uh, thanks a lot for the participation. Uh, thank you very much, everyone. Uh, thanks for voting. Thanks for listening. Thanks for uh, sharing what, what organization uh, you are from. And, uh, and I hope that you will be participating in future uh, webinars and other events. Please do visit uh, Blockstart. Um, Air, well, on both on, on Facebook and LinkedIn, uh, there's uh, we regularly post relevant information and, and, and links that uh, could be very useful to you. Um, thanks a lot for sharing. Thanks a lot for, a lot for listening. Thank you and goodbye.